Okay, so this is going to be a quick update on my Super Jewel Ringer Looper experiments. Now in this particular model, I've gone back to the Super Jewel Ringer 3.0 circuit layout. So check out laserhacker.com, the link in this video description for that. But um, I've gone back to that schematic with one variation. Um, when I come here from the LEDs, when I return to the transistor, I connect to the base. Um, that was crucial to getting this to work like this. So let me go ahead and connect it up to the scope. So I've got a 9 volt battery here and I'll uh, connect it up here to start the circuit and I want to point out the waveform and also I want to point out how stable the waveform is when I disconnect the battery. So the only component in the circuit now besides the electrolyte capacitor is that single transistor. You can see I disconnected the battery and I have a very stable waveform. It's not changing noticeably at all. Let me come in here and uh, show you some of the wave shapes so you can see. You can see that there's some ringing here on it. Let me uh, see if I can adjust the uh, scope here so you can see that better. There you go. So that's it running along. And that was that one touch uh, to the 9 volt battery that started the circuit up. So I'm very happy now with the stability of the, uh, the circuit. So let me disconnect the scope because that does affect the runtime. Um, so now we got the scope disconnected and uh, I've got this little guy buttoned down so I can pick it up and uh, show you it's very very simple and that's one of the things I really like about the uh, super jewel ringer type circuits is the simplicity of the circuit. Now I did go to a germanium uh, transistor here and uh, that was crucial to getting it to work at this level of efficiency and uh, that's a germanium it's a 2N let me get this here in the uh, the light. It's a 2N1304. So a 2N1304 transistor. And uh, the third winding on this coil, this coil to run in this configuration, it doesn't really need three windings, but I do have a third winding. One side of it I'm connecting into the uh, high voltage output. And depending on which side you connect to the return path there, it will either run longer or run a shorter, shorter run time. And if you ground this side right here, even if I touch with my body, but especially if you ground it, you can also increase the run time. So I thought that was very, very interesting. Um, what else can I say about this? So yeah, third winding not absolutely necessary, but I am using it to tune. Again, I'm very happy that I'm back to the single component uh, Super Jewel Ringer 3.0 circuit, you know, just a single transistor. Um, and this is a 3000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor here that I did the initial charge on. Now down here in the shop, I do have a uh, microwave. So that's been a request from folks. And uh, let me just put the uh, circuit back in here. set this guy up so that we can hopefully see it from outside here. Sorry, I apologize for the, uh, the thing. I'm just trying to get the right angle. All right, that's pretty good. So we'll close the door and uh, you can see it in there. It's glowing along just fine inside the microwave. So uh, again, that's the microwave test on the uh, LED driver. So there's a, unless you want to watch like 10 minutes of video here with me doing the rundown, I haven't really done a lot of uh, rundown testing to see how long this device runs like this. But based on what I've seen so far, it goes a really long time for a 3000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So that's one thing I know so far. Earlier with a different transistor, I did a uh, test and it ran for over 10 minutes and uh, the voltage had barely dropped. I think it, after 10 minutes, I think it was down, oh, I don't know, somewhere around six volts or something. So we're hovering right around the uh, natural <laughs> loss in voltage that these electrolyte capacitors have anyway. So it's getting very hard and tricky to measure. I'd have to take a very similar, similar electrolytic capacitor and test the uh, voltage drop. Let me see if I can get the, uh, camera to focus on this cap, but I would have to test. Yeah, you can see it's a 10 volt, 3000 uh, microfarad electrolytic capacitor. But you know, I'd have to do some testing, like I said, with that same electrolytic capacitor on some uh, different circuits. But anyway, um, just very happy with this, this little guy. 
And uh, definitely I'm going to continue to uh, do research along this line. And uh, this is by far the best, most stable running uh, circuit. And uh, I'll go ahead and connect up the scope here again at this point and show you the uh, wave here. Let me see if I can clip this on and uh, get it adjusted. Anyway, let me turn the intensity up here a little bit. So you can see it just rings along. Very, very stable circuit. So anyway, um, I know there's been discussion as to how circuits like this can be faked with button cells under the uh, pots or hiding a supercapacitor inside the electrolytic capacitor cover. I'm here to tell you that I don't think that's necessary to get a circuit to run like this after doing a lot of experimenting. I think it's a matter of a few different things. It could be the copper foils. I'm experimenting with the removal and the addition of that. I'm not sure that the pieces of copper foil are necessarily crucial at this point, but I will uh, wind more. And uh, after doing more winding with more coils, I can begin to determine that. You can see over here, I just want to show you what, what I've been up to over here. I've got a ton of 3D printed uh, bobbins. And I will continue to, uh, to reach your... Ay, ay, ay. Sorry about that, guys. I've got a lot of things set up here in the shop, and something just fell down. But uh, anyway, I've got a lot of these uh, 3D printed bobbins, so I will be experimenting with those. And I've got the new bobbins are designed to fit this uh, tape perfectly. So... Give me a chance. I'll get this all set up on uh, laserhacker.com and we can continue to uh, experiment and go on from there. But anyway, I need to go to bed and uh, take a break from this for a while and get ready to go to church tomorrow. But uh, anyway, I'll keep sharing. Like I said, this video could go on and on and on, but it does get a little uh, boring after a while. So... Anyway, that's it, folks. Microwave test, scope test. I know for a fact that I used up some of the energy a few times touching between this coil. You see right there, if I touch, let me pull this up and I'll show you something. I can run the system down faster just be touching between here and the ferrite or here in the screw. So you see that I can bounce and kind of tune this and get the brightness up. But uh, yeah, look at that, folks. That's really bright right there. But again, I think for longer runtime, it's better to connect this to a ground. So, so I think when I do this, I actually discharge the uh, capacitor some as well. So there might be a point to try to connect and, and capture some energy in a looping type arrangement between these two points. But again, by far the best I've done on a 3000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor back to a very simple circuit. I don't know, what else can I say? Um, the winding ratio is a little different. I could take one of these parts, one of these apart, and explain that uh, in the future. Um, I've got a f two or maybe three layers on the primary, and then I was just really filling up the secondary with 28 gauge wire, and I actually ran out of wire, so I just stopped the winding at the point I ran out at. So I'm surprised uh, this is still continuing to go after, you know, connecting between this wire and the case and doing such a bright run, but. Man, this thing just runs on and on. And All right, so I'm back. I actually ran out of space on the camera as this video has gone on for an exceedingly long time. So I went off, deleted a bunch of videos on my camera, and I'm back just to do a little wrap-up here on this. So yeah, as I said earlier, you know, I did discharge the capacitor to some degree, you know, touching and increasing the brightness on here, but we've done a long runtime. We have the scope hook hooked up, which affects the runtime. It doesn't run as long with the scope hooked up. Um... Yeah, what can I say? This circuit just runs on and on and on, folks. So, Okay, so one other thing I want to show here is a discharging of the circuit and a starting of it again. So the circuit's been running here I don't know how long. I mean, I'm going to have to do some, some run tests on this thing, but I can tell you at 10 minutes of run time, it's, it's still got plenty of uh, action going on. So I've killed the effect. 
you can see there that it is gone. And I just want to show how quick uh, this can recharge. And again, incredibly simple circuit here. So I do have the parts coming to actually uh, mimic some of the Akula type circuitry. And I want to couple this particular transformer with some of that because so far, in my experience, it's all been in the transformer arrangement that these uh, new discoveries have been made. So let me go ahead and uh, start it. So that was it. I mean, just a touch and this thing starts up. Now, as you know, we tested in the microwave earlier. So at this point, uh, I'm gonna call it a day. I'm going back to the house. I'm going to uh, go to bed. But what I thought I'd do is bring this with me out to the car and uh, just show you that it's not a pickup from inside the building here. There's not some energy field you know, inside this building that this particular circuit's picking up. So bear with me as I go over here, lock it up, turn off the light, and uh, call it a day here and uh, head back to the house and see if this thing continues to work in the car. Worked fine in the microwave, so you can see the lights off here. And uh, let me see here, I'm shining this at the wall. I don't know if you can see that. This functions as a very, very dim flashlight. But hey, I've never even seen a flashlight that runs any length of time on a 3000 microfarad capacitor or can charge as fast as we just charge this thing. So. Considering that I have not even started tuning this uh, particular circuit yet and winding the coils, you know, to best optimum resonance, I'm very, very happy with uh, even this amount in this uh, demonstration that I'm doing here right now. So I see a lot of potential with, for this type of device if this can be improved upon. So anyway, let me head outside here. So I'm now outside the building. Um, I'm just going to lock up the door here. So one second. All right, let me uh, get the car open up here. So, I'm out here at the car. You can see the light's still shining. It's reflecting the car here just fine. And not only does it run inside a microwave, but it also runs in the car. So, pretty cool. Um, let me just get my keys. I think I left them over here. Sorry about this rambling long video, but I think it does do a pretty good job of showing, you know, the runtime of this circuit in kind of a uh, organic way as it runs along here. So continues to run just fine. I'll place it here by the dash. And uh, you can see, man, it glows along and you can also see it there with the telltales in the dash. So kind of cool. And, uh, continues to run with no trouble whatsoever so it's definitely not dependent on a particular uh, signal that's going on inside that building and it's definitely uh, an effect worth exploring so at this point you know was Akula faking it I don't know I don't know what to say on his behalf on that but based on what I'm now able to do with this particular circuit um, I definitely see potential to do demonstrations like he did on his videos. In fact, at this point, I think my my runtime is far longer than anything I saw him demonstrating with the uh, particular circuit. So, yes, it's possible without using electrolytic capacitors or batteries hidden under you know the the pot or super capacitors hidden inside electrolytic capacitor cases. It's possible, folks, to create a circuit that you just touch with a battery. And it runs on and on and on and on like this. So I think there's great potential as, you know, different winding ratios, etc., continue to be experimented with. I have in no way begun to tap out the effects of uh, tuning on the circuit. I've just barely begun. Um, so I think there'll be a whole, you know, new world of discovery as I tune this circuit for optimum operation. But, uh, Anyway, I love seeing it there just glowing along in my dash. <laughs> so, um, at this point, uh, my camera's coming up and saying low battery, so I'm going to have to stop these long uh, durations. Sorry for the long and boring video, but hey, I'm excited. I've never had uh, anything work like this before in a continuous run mode on a 3000 microfarad uh, super, or capacitor. So, man, if this thing was on a super capacitor, I guess it would run for days. <laughs> 
So anyway, that's it. That's the little drive. I'm back and it just runs on. So anyway, so, so fascinating. So there it is folks, running on into the night. All right, my camera's battery's dying. Um, the light runs on, but I'm going to stop at this point. This research continues. Um, it's enjoyable. Check out laserhacker.com. Description of the video link for more information. I'll get a proper schematic drawn up, although, as I said earlier, it's basically the same. I'll also get specs on these uh, transistors or anything else I think may be crucial in the duplicating, but this is uh, very simple. The magic is in the transformer in this case. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when I create that incredibly complex driver circuit that Akula and those guys are using. But hey, I'm more than happy with this at this point. So let's all keep experimenting. Let's uh, keep sharing our results and go from there. We'll talk later.